Okay, let's talk shaving. Many of us do it, but it can be a real pain. And for those with sensitive skin, razor burn, ingrown hairs can be painful and unsightly. Perfect timing with our Katy Perry convo. Yes. Her not shaving since having a baby. Dermatologist Dr. Sherry Ingraham joins us now with her best tips on shaving ahead of swimsuit season. Dr. Ingraham, it is so great. Uh, you have helped solve our viewers' skin <laughs> problems, some of our own personal skin <laughs> problems. So it's great to see you. And when it comes to shaving, um, this is something, like Courtney just said, so many of us do this, and if you do have sensitive skin, this can be a dreaded part of someone's routine. So walk us through the whole process from A to Z. The key is making it comfortable and getting your skin in a position to receive the razor in the best way so that you get smooth results without irritation. So the key to all of this is warmth. You want to have a warm bath or a warm shower first, which I know you can't do on the air today when we talk about this, but the key is the skin being warm because when the skin is warm and you don't pull it taut, it's relaxed. Because what happens is when we pull the skin taut, we shave too close and we cause irritation. When the skin is dry, if it's not lubricated or if the skin is cold, it's really putting those follicles in a place to get irritated and overshave. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to make the skin happy when you shave. So the best part is maybe wait till the end of your bath or shower when, when the skin is nice and, uh, you know, it, it's warmed up to the shower. Exactly. Okay. Exa if you've never jumped in the shower and shave your legs, when you almost oh. have goosebumps, you see this happening. <sighs> Horrible. Hate it. Okay, let's talk about razor burn because not only can that happen on our legs, but we're talking underarms for men. It's the neck. It's the chin area. We're, we're all susceptible to this. Yeah, it's actually in medical terms called pseudo folliculitis barbie, which means kind of a false folliculitis. And what happens is the skin gets pulled tight. The hair, we cut it so close on the surface that it retracts in. And then when it grows back out, it grows out sideways into the skin. And then you get an inflammatory bump there. And that's kind of this folliculitis pattern. And we want to avoid that as much as possible. And the good news is there's all kinds of tips and tricks so you can prevent that or you could even get laser hair removal done and then really prevent it. And are there ways that we can prevent it? Because I I'm assuming replacing your razor often is one of them, right? You don't want to be using a dirty or a dull razor, right? Exactly. Just like when you're cutting anything, you want it to be smooth, clean, bacteria-free. So a new razor is key. You don't have to buy a new one every week, but I say maybe every week to every other week, get a new disposable razor. Really, if you're prone to this, if you're very sensitive, you need to get a single-bladed razor, which kind of sounds counterintuitive, right? Because you think, okay, the more blades, the fancier, the more modern the razor. But unfortunately, the more blades, the closer the shave. And the closer the shave, you're more likely to have that skin cut even closer to the hair and then the hair retracts in. You actually want a less perfect shave with a single blade razor shaving in the direction of the hair. The hair won't be cut as perfectly, you won't be as smooth, but you will be less likely to get that inflammatory bump developing secondarily, which is what we're trying to prevent. Dr. Ingraham, my mind is blown. I'm so glad you talked about all those different razors because I feel like when you walk down the razor aisle, there's 9,000 different ones to choose from. And who knows, it's sort of like you're, you're just randomly picking it. So I'm so glad you went over that. Um, and let's talk about, I know that you already said uh, about laser hair. What about waxing? That could be irritating as well. Waxing is fine too. Again, it can be irritating. It depends on the person. Some of my patients who wax when I tell them you know we can laser your back their eyes light up they had no idea or they thought it would be too expensive or too painful you can wax all these areas but if you are sensitive skinned it can be very uncomfortable and it's something that you have to kind of keep up on a monthly basis versus once you get lasered you're pretty much hair free or almost hair free for as long as you want to be so that is a benefit and if you add up the cost of repeatedly waxing eventually you hit the cost of being lasered so I do very often and articulate to patients, you may as well go ahead and get lasered because in the long run, it's less painful and less expensive mm -hmm. than waxing. When it comes to shaving, there's all kinds of things you can get at the drugstore now that can make your shaving experience kind of tolerable and prevent these shave bumps too. Okay, and Dr. Ingraham, speaking of that, we've got about a minute for you to walk me through how to properly Whoa. shave. I'm going to hike up these jeans here and uh, walk me through it. The first thing here is this hydrating facial cleanser. Should I be washing yes. my legs with facial cleanser? 
Yes, so that's a little secret. CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser is chemical free, it's for sensitive skin, and it's got this really nice glossy feel to it. So when you shave with it, it won't overclog your razor, but it will allow you to get a decently close shave without irritating the skin. And because it doesn't have any fragrance, it's not gonna be real soapy, it doesn't mess up the pH of the skin and hurt the skin barrier, because when you're shaving, you're hurting the skin barrier. If you shave downward like you're doing so beautifully, gosh, is that beautiful. You're shaving in the direction of hair, which makes it less likely to grow into the skin. Now, if you're very, very fancy and you say, you know what, I want to shave foam, then I advocate people use a therapeutic shave foam. Something like Aveeno, which you see next to Derek there, has glycerin in it, it has oatmeal, it has soothing ingredients. So if you're one of those people, you're, you're old fashioned, you want a good shave foam, stick with the Aveeno. You don't want anything that's got a lot of fragrance or menthol or an aftershavey smell. Sometimes those things can irritate the skin. But when my patients come in and they already have the bumps, by the way, you look so good. You're getting ready for summer and some short shorts there, Derek, and you're doing a beautiful job. If you will, after you shave, apply that CeraVe SA lotion, maybe not immediately after you shave. See how that feels. You can go ahead and put it on. Some people can tolerate it immediately after the shave. Other people can be a little sensitive. That has salicylic acid in it. And what that does is it prevents you from getting an ingrown hair. If you are prone to ingrown hairs, when you shave under your arms, you can use a little wash like this Neutrogena with sal acid, or you can use that CeraVe SA lotion after you shave, and that'll keep those hairs from getting ingrown and making little spots. Okay, that's a great little uh, aftershave. My recommendation, don't shave on live TV. Keep it to the privacy of your own shower. You might <laughs> have better results right than I did. Dr. Ingraham, thank you so much. It's great to see you. Good to see you, too. And to see a complete list of tips and recommended products by Dr. Ingerham, check out our website of HoustonLife.tv. Good job. Keep going. You've only really so got quickly. a little spot there. Keep okay, going. Okay. All right, coming up, job seekers, listen up. One company is looking to hire...